uh, vitamin D, I should say, and aldosterone, both being types of cholesterol. In addition to vitamin D being a version of cholesterol, vitamin D is the ultimate, the ultimate health and wellness vitamin. It's the ultimate wellness vitamin. In fact, it's a hormone. It's not a vitamin. And, and this distinction between vitamins and hormones is something we'll talk about here. We'll probably get to talking about it on Monday. It's very important to recognize vitamins are, for the most part, cofactors, with the exception of vitamin D and vitamin A. Vitamin D and vitamin A are no mere cofactors. They're actually hormones. They do, they do the work. Vitamins the B vitamins, vitamin C, and to a certain extent, vitamin E as well, are cofactors. Vitamin E is kind of a protecting vitamin. It's not really a cofactor. But vitamin B, vitamin C, and vitamin K, these are cofactors. Vitamin E is like a protecting vitamin. Vitamin A and D, those are hormones. They are the superstars. They're like the superhero vitamins. They're not, they don't just assist. They're the leading men or women. In terms of vitamin D, it is the quintessential health and wellness hormone, vitamin, hormone slash vitamin, from building to fighting cancer to supporting digestive health to supporting brain health to acting as an anti-inflammatory. Vitamin D is the quintessential good time, all is right in the world, summertime on the African savanna, lots of zebras and wildebeest to feast on vitamin. It tells the body everything is good, all is good. It tells the stress system it can stand down because everything's all right. And as far as aldosterone goes and high blood pressure goes, vitamin D suppresses aldosterone. It suppresses stress hormones. It suppresses cortisol. Deficiencies in vitamin D, shortages in vitamin D, on the other hand, are associated with higher stress hormones, higher aldosterone levels. And by using vitamin D, whether you're getting it from the sun or supplementally, whether you're getting from foods, is a great way to lower your blood pressure and drop, drop aldosterone, lower your blood pressure, as well as reduce electrolyte loss. And by the way, because of the sun's relationship to manufacturing of vitamin D, that makes the sun wonderfully antihypertensive. That makes the sun the best antihypertensive medicine you could use, non-toxic antihypertensive medicine. And it also means the sun can help keep your electrolytes in your body. It can help suppress electrolyte loss. That means a certain amount of sun, a small amount of sun, not burning. We're not talking about here roasting in the sun and laying out and getting all you know, super dark and tan. But a small amount of sun every day is anti-stress. And everything we associate with stress as far as degenerative diseases is, uh, is protected. It can be avoided by a little bit of sun exposure. Don't overdo it. This is where the sun gets a bad reputation. People overdo it. People burn. Don't overdo it. Too much sun can cause a stress response, just like just the right amount of sun can mitigate or reduce the stress response. For men dealing with prostate issues, because low vitamin D is a trigger for prostate disease, especially as we said for black men or heavily pigmented males, super dark, if you have a lot of pigment, Hispanics for example, the sun is, uh, can protect your prostate too. And the sun will lower your blood pressure if you've got uh, if you have vitamin D deficiencies or if you're dark skinned. Same with kidney disease, by the way, and all circulatory issues for that matter. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 236 6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24 7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. Brightsideben.com or also benfuchsarchives.com. Both, both pages have search engines. If you want to check out my blog, that's uh, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. And also, you can purchase longevity products right off any of the websites, or you can call the Brightside Ben. Phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to check out our truth treatment products, including Truth Serum, Retinol 5% Gel, made with 25% vitamin C. You're not going to see that anywhere, folks. Retinol and vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrance, no preservatives, uh, no uh, fillers, no waxes, no emulsifiers, non-irritating, and a big old dose of retinol and vitamin C. You can find, it all, find out about all the Truth products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we'll get your phone calls here in just a sec. Hang tight, 844-236-6010 is our number. 
Excuse me, we've got a line open for you as well if you want to get on board, 844-236-6010. We're talking aldosterone and cholesterol and vitamin D. On our next program, we're going to talk about hormones. We hear this word all the time, hormones. But what exactly is a hormone? What's the difference between a hormone and a vitamin? Why are hormones so darn important? You hear about hormonal acne, hormonal, uh, hormonal conditions, uh, hormonal uh, uh, issues with, people's, with women's menstrual cycles. Premenstrual syndrome is a hormone issue, but what exactly are hormones and why are they so darn important? We'll be talking about hormones on our next Bright Side episode. A couple more things about vitamin D and then we'll get your phone calls. Deficiencies in vitamin D are associated with higher blood pressure. Deficiencies in vitamin D are associated with electrolyte loss. Replacing vitamin D tends to drop aldosterone, which means lower blood pressure, which means a reduction in the loss of sodium and potassium. That means that makes the sun a powerful antihypertensive. Don't overdo it. As I said, I know I say it all the time. Don't overdo the sun. This is where we, the sun gets such a bad reputation is because we overdo it. But a little bit of sun is incredibly important. If you're dealing with prostate issues, the sun will protect your prostate via this vitamin D connection, especially for black men or Hispanic men or any males who are heavily pigmented. High blood pressure likewise. Vitamin D drops blood pressure. Same with kidney disease, same with any circulatory disease. Vitamin D is important for the blood sugar system if you're a diabetic. All of this is so important because how do we get vitamin D? Ourselves, from the sun. None of this requires a doctor. None of this requires a medical model. All it requires is laying out in the sun. How cool is that? You lay out in the sun and you get healthy. You lay out in the sun, you lower your blood pressure. You lay out in the sun and you protect yourself from prostate disease and heart disease. You lay out in the sun and you protect yourself from diabetes. You lay out in the sun, you don't need to go to a doctor without your sunscreen, by the way. Again, don't burn without your sunscreen because that's going to suppress the production of vitamin D. All right, we'll continue talking about hormones and hormone health. We'll talk about the distinction between hormones and vitamins. And we'll talk about the two most important types of chemicals in the body as far as... Uh, as far as biochemistry goes, as far as health goes, we'll do that on our next Bright Side episode. Time to hit the phones, and we do have a couple lines open at 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Washington and welcome Lisa to the Bright Side. What's up, Lisa? Good morning. Um, I, my mother-in-law was just diagnosed with um, stage 3 uh, pancreatic cancer Ooh. and in Seattle, and I'm looking to be able to provide some support to her nutritionally and supplementally um, as I'm sure she's going to um, probably choose to do the chemotherapy. Um, they say she has a tumor that is very close to some arteries, so they cannot um, do any kind of surgery until um, they can get the tumor uh, down in size. Now, if they you, can, even then. How old is your, is your mother-in-law? She'll be 75 on okay. Saturday. You know, pancreatic cancer is, is one of the big-time cancers for elderly folks, and it makes sense considering the pancreas is such a hard-working and underappreciated organ that it makes sense that just over time it would break down. Cancer takes a long time to develop, folks. It doesn't just happen. By the time cancer shows up, especially stage 3 cancer shows up, this is a body that's been in distress for a long period of time. So what do you, how do you handle this? Well, you got to love the body. Be kind to the body. Relax the body. Chemotherapy does the exact opposite, by the way, but that's another story. Now, they'll tell you that pancreas, I'm sure you've heard this, pancreatic cancer is one of the most deadly forms of cancer, and as we age, the risk goes up. But what they don't tell you is while 95%, and that's high, 95% of people with pancreatic cancer will die from it, that means 5% won't. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, you'll, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll hear all the bad news, all the sturm and drang, all the terrible stuff about pancreatic cancer, and it's certainly one of the deadliest, if not the deadliest form of cancer. It's a glandular cancer. They call it an adenocarcinoma. Most pancreatic cancers are glandular adenocarcinomas. When you hear adeno, that means gland, like adrenal adeno means gland. And when they tell you 95% of people die from it, that means 5% survive it, all right? That means it's survivable. If five out of 100 people survive it, that means you can survive it. Does that make sense? That should be reassuring right there, all right? So what do you do? Well, first of all, if she's on chemotherapy, you should know that fasting helps chemotherapy work better. Did you know that? Fasting, Did you, fasting will improve the, the effects of the chemotherapy, okay? That's first of all. And you can Google that, fasting and chemotherapy. Fasting improves the effects of chemotherapy. Secondly, when I say being kind to the body, 
and I'm talking about fasting, keeping your intake of calories down is very important, especially sugar, especially bread, especially pasta. Don't underestimate or marginalize the importance of eating behaviors and food choices when it comes to helping the body fight cancer. The more work or resources that the body is harnessing to digesting food, the less resources it's going to have available to heal and to fight cancer. And we talked to uh, Victoria Skalvinskis on Tuesday, and we were talking about how after you eat anything, your immune system gets sparked up. Anything. There's, it's called postprandial. Prandial means eating. Postprandial leukocytosis or postprandial inflammation or postprandial immunity. All this means that after we eat, our immune system goes on high alert. This is not a good thing if you're dealing with cancer because the immune system should be fighting the cancer, not fighting the food. So uh, uh, the Cron diet, calorie restriction, optimum nutrition can be very helpful. How do you get nutrition without, uh, without calories? Supplementing. She should be on the Healthy Start Pack, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, sipping on it all day long. Again, it will help her chemo work better, especially vitamin C. If it was me, I'd be doing intravenous vitamin C. God forbid I got diagnosed with cancer and, you know, we, we all live under the sword of Damocles. We never know when that's going to hit based on how we live our lives. Intravenous vitamin C is amazingly, or potentially anyway, amazingly helpful. And that's intravenous. Now, oral vitamin C as well. You can also do something called intravenous glutathione, intravenous selenium. At stage three, I'd be going intravenous. That's just me. If you want to go the oral route, of course, that's also a way to get nutrition into your system. Uh, orally vitamin C is anti-cancer, orally selenium, the ultimate selenium from longevity. Anything you do to build glutathione orally, that means glutamine powder. You can get that at the health food store. Glutamine is also found in whey protein. That's something else you might want to do. Bone soup is another anti-cancer strategy. Using bone soup is an anti-cancer strategy. That's another way to get nutrition without calories, by the way. Soups, because they're high water content, depending on the soup you're using, is a great way to get an, a, a big old dose of nutrition without having to have the body process a lot of calories or do a lot of enzymatic processing as well. Hang tight because there's a couple more things, okay? Don't go away and, and uh, we'll get you a couple more ideas for dealing with pancreatic cancer. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. We're back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Lisa in Washington. Lisa, are you there? I am. Okay, a couple more things. Uh, just so you know, the body can heal. The body can reverse. Can, it's happened. Remissions happen. Now, she's your, your mother-in-law's older. It's going to be a little bit tougher, and she's probably been doing things, the wrong things, for a long period of time, so it's going to be a little bit tougher for her, but there's nonetheless, there's things that, that she can do. The most important thing is to give the body everything it needs and to relax the body. This is where fasting is so important. Keeping the body in a calm state. Fasting hypes up the immune system. I'm sorry, eating hypes up the immune system and fasting calms the body down, relaxing the body. Remember, you got two nervous systems. You got a relaxing nervous system, which is where the body protects itself, and then you got the stress nervous system, which suppresses the immune system. So relaxing the body to activate the relaxation nervous system is a key, key, key strategy for dealing with cancer. This is why nutritional supplementation is so important. It, by giving the body everything it needs, the body feels like all is okay. It can afford to spend its resources on fighting things. So relaxing the body through massage, through hot water, uh, um, hot tubs, hot baths, hot showers, Reiki, deep breathing, and even hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Hyperbaric oxygen is when they actually drive oxygen into your lungs. Uh, most hospitals or a lot of hospitals have hyperbaric oxygen chambers that you can use. Um, enzymes can be stupendously helpful for dealing with cancer. There's a lot of really cool literature on using enzymes for cancer. We talked about we talked on Tuesday about Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, uh, who used enzyme therapy for dealing with cancer. Pancreatic enzymes, especially, can be helpful. Uh, any enzymes, the ultimate enzymes from longevity, the enzymes off brightsidehealthproducts.com, the systemic enzymes. Uh, you can get pancreatic enzymes as a prescription, pancreatin as a prescription. Certainly raw foods and sprouts can help too. The Gerson therapy utilizes raw foods and sprouts and vegetables, which are enzyme rich. So using a Vitamix 
uh, getting a Vitamix and making juices in your Vitamix can help. 